Welcome to Unleash the Awesome with Dave Gambrill. All of us have unique skills, talents, and abilities that aren't being used to their full potential. Our mission is to share the people, tools, apps, and other resources that will help you unleash your awesome on the world. Yo, what's up? It's Dave. Welcome to another episode of Unleash the Awesome. I'm back. Today, let's talk about plan your work and work your plan. We are inundated with so much information, so many ideas, so many strategies, so much stuff that if you don't have a plan for what you're trying to do or a framework or a system, you're really going to struggle. You're going to flail about aimlessly. And I saw a perfect example of it just a couple weeks ago. Happened to be in Orlando, Florida for a conference, Funnel Hacking Live from Russell Brunson and my friends at ClickFunnels. It was an amazing event. If you've never been to one, I highly encourage you to go to the one next year. It will also be in Orlando, I think in the September time frame. But I happened to be down there and I did have some free time and a few of us decided that we were going to go hit some of the theme parks. And so we went to one of the Disney parks, Disney's Hollywood Studios, and I was amazed. I don't know why, but because I see it all the time, but I'm still amazed by the number of people who walked into that park after spending, I don't know, it's like $100 a ticket baseline. And then there's all the things about getting there and the travel and the hotel and the lodging, whatever. So lots of people have spent thousands of dollars just to set foot inside a theme park like that at Disney World. And we walked in and I had a plan of attack and the group we're with, we had a plan of attack. And I said, we're going to go do this and this and this and try to do this, this and this. And we had a plan and we weren't going to, you know, I wasn't going to be upset if we couldn't stick to it entirely because there was a lot of variables, a lot of unknowns that we couldn't control, things like that. But at least we had a plan and we went in and we're going to execute on it. But as we were going through the turnstiles and it took a few minutes to get us all through there, I stopped and looked around at the people as we just walked into the park. And there were so many people that were kind of standing there with a look on their face like, okay, we're here, now what do we do? And I saw people taking out maps. I saw people looking at their phones, trying to decide. Like they hadn't even decided yet what they were going to do once they got in there. And if you're unfamiliar with one of those Disney theme parks, if you're really smart about it, First thing in the morning, as soon as the park opens, you can usually go ride one, two, maybe three of their marquee rides before the wait times get to be an hour plus easily. And that's kind of what our strategy was. But if you wait, if you wait any time at all, if you wait 10 or 15 minutes and you try to go ride one, then you're already going to be stuck behind the curve. It's just... It's so fast. Those parks fill up so fast. The, the rides and the lines fill up so fast. And yes, now they have virtual queues and I don't know, they're introducing a new kind of fast pass thing where you can learn how to manage that stuff, but that could all be part of your plan. But I was still just amazed at how many people looked like they were wandering around aimlessly and a whole group of people, not even like somebody in their group was the leader and everybody else was just kind of like, okay, well, Dave, we'll go wherever. Cause that's kind of how my group was. We, uh, but I executed on the plan. I uh, communicated the plan before we even got in there. I communicated the plan the night before. Here's what we're doing. Here's what we're going to try to figure out. Here's what we're going to try to ride. We're going to go here. It's to the left. When we go into the park, we're going to go to the left. We're going to go over this way. we got to pass this and get to there, right? We had a plan. And so, yeah, we executed our plan. We were able to ride like three of the marquee rides in the first 90 minutes. That usually, And by the end of the day, one of them had like a 90-minute wait time of its own. So think about that for a second. So we had a plan and we executed on it. It wasn't perfect, but I think it was George Patton who said, a good plan violently executed now is better than a perfect plan executed next week. All right? And so we just went with our plan and executed on it. So we planned our work and we worked our plan. But this also holds true for just about anything, including how we get inundated with information every day. Like if you don't have a plan for how you think about the information you're presented with on social media, through podcasts, through reading, whatever, if you don't have some mental models or some plans, or some systems, or some frameworks, or some ways to think about the information you're being presented with, then you're just going to be like a boat out at sea, just drifting, right? You're not going to have any plan. You're not going to have set your sail in a particular direction. You're not, you don't have any way to handle the onslaught of information. So essentially, you just get punched in the face and are stuck in a situation where you have to be reactionary instead of being thoughtful and responsive. So I think about all the information and misinformation that we get through social media. And some of it is an organized campaign by bad actors. And 
if you don't have a way to handle that, if you don't have a plan of how you look at that information and how you think about that information and what you do with that information, then those people will be able to easily manipulate you with things that they do because they're doing really powerful things. I study psychology and influence and things like that, and I talk about it from a marketing perspective all the time, but bad actors can use it as well to spread disinformation and things like that. So if you're not reading books, like I highly recommend the book from Ryan Holiday called Trust Me, I'm Lying. It talks about how the media gets played and how easy it is to play the media. And I've actually done it myself with some things. It's just, you know, they're looking for certain things. And if you provide it to them, then you have the leverage to be able to move a story into the national spotlight that maybe didn't deserve to be there and wasn't quite as fact-checked as it could have been. Because now in a lot of media, speed is the winner. So they're not doing the journalistic things they used to do for days gone by, Walter Cronkite days where, and Tom Brokaw even probably, where they're checking their sources and double checking their sources and getting it confirmed and things like that. People are just trying to get it out there as fast as they can so they can get more eyeballs and more clicks. So if you personally don't have a plan and execute on that plan of how to handle that information, then you're just going to be out there drifting around doing whatever, right? And I think that's one of the biggest challenges right now is like, if you don't know how to take that information in and make decisions on it, good decisions based on the information you're provided with, then it's really hard to have any kind of success in anything in your personal life, in your fitness, in your family, in your relationships, in your business, whatever. Like if you're consistently going and getting bad information, it's really hard to make good decisions based on bad information. So if you don't have a way to delineate the good from the bad, if you don't have a way to figure out and extract the signal from the noise then you're just going to hear the noise and you're going to say, oh my gosh, this is a total wasteland. I don't know what's going on social media. Like you'll see this every day. Just go look at social media and you'll see people that will say things like, I'm leaving. I can't take this anymore. This is just gross. So bad. Everybody's so negative. It's so political. And I'm like, listen, if you actually had a plan for how you could either unfollow or unsubscribe or delete or block or put people in friends list or whatever, if you had a way to do that, then it doesn't have to be that bad. And you can actually get really good information on social media, on all the different channels, uh, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn, whatever. But it's that people don't have a plan for how to segment that information and use it in a way that serves whatever it is they're trying to do. So the information that's out there is only as good as the plan you have for how you're going to absorb that information. And ultimately, how are you going to execute on it? At some point, you got to execute. I see a lot of people that are like, I'm a lifelong learner. Okay, that's great. But what are you doing? I prefer that you also be a lifelong doer or trier or executor, although that's probably not a good choice of words, but you know what I mean, right? It's getting out there, trying it, seeing what happens, learning from that, learning from your own situations, learning from your own data based on things that you did and executed on. So even when you're trying to launch a business or a side hustle, you got to have a plan. But then the second part of the title of this podcast is work the plan, right? So many people are planning the work and they continue to plan the work and they want to plan it a little more and plan some more and plan it a little more, plan it tomorrow, plan it next week, but they never execute on it, right? They never work it. They never do the work. Another great book by Ryan Holiday gets a second shout out today. The obstacle is the way. Oftentimes, the things that you don't want to be doing, the very work that you should be doing, you uh, that's, what, that's what you need to do. That's what people will avoid. Right? Don't mishear this or misquote this, but I think what a lot of people are doing is they're using their, their safe space or their self-care language to, instead of using those to recharge, which we all need to do, we all need those things we need to recharge, but I think a lot of people retreat into those places and stay there. And like, ah, I need to, you know, be do self-care all the time continuously. No, the reason why you kind of back up a little bit, take a breather, is so that you can continue to forge ahead and execute on your plan again. And sometimes, sometimes you need to change the plan. Sometimes you get some information or a situation occurs and you need to change the plan, right? Mike Tyson famously says, one of my favorite quotes of all time, everyone has a plan until they get punched in the face. So you're going to get punched in the face, hopefully not literally, but just metaphorically, and things are not going to go exactly the way you want. And then do you have a plan for how you're going to handle that, right? So your plan almost needs a plan. Like, what are you going to do when this happens or that happens? And again, you can't 
sit there and try to figure out every possible scenario and situation that could occur, but just a general framework for here are some of the key guidelines or principles we believe in. Here's what we will always do. Here's what we will never do. And then when situations come up, then you go, okay, fine. This is how we're going to execute on it. Uh, I think about this, it happens to be popular right now. There's a show on Netflix called Squid Game. I'm not recommending necessarily that you watch it, although I did enjoy it. It's very violent. But I just watched the entire thing. And as I was watching it, I couldn't help but think about how the people that were successful, and I'm not, no spoilers here, but how the people were successful in that had some kind of plan. And sometimes it wasn't the best plan, but at least they had a plan. And so then when they were presented with new information, they could alter that plan or just make some minor adjustments instead of being like, oh my gosh, now what do I do? So I would encourage you in closing today to think about, do you have a plan? When you're presented with information, when you're trying to execute on your side hustle, when you're trying to save money for retirement, when you're trying to save money for your kid's college education, when you're trying to do whatever, do you have a plan? Have you sat down with somebody who could help you with that if you need to? And sometimes it's not even sitting down with somebody. Sometimes it's just getting a really good book. That's how I get a lot of my stuff. I mentioned Ryan Holiday's books twice already, but I read Tim Ferriss a lot, listen to his podcast a lot. And the reason I do is because he brings on people and he talks about frameworks. His latest episode that I just listened to today before recording this was with General Stanley McChrystal, and they were talking about risk and the frameworks and the strategies around how to mitigate or handle risk because we're all going to have risk. And then what do you do about it? How do you handle it? What are the systems you have in place? So one of the best things you can do is get some plans. And if you don't have plans or you don't feel confident in your ability to make a plan, then get some books, listen to some good podcasts, buy some courses, go to the library, whatever. Get around some people, both literally if you can or figuratively through the books and the other information they published and set, set out a plan for the things that are important to you, for your finances, for your relationships, for your business, the revenue in your business, whatever, for posting on social media, like the other tactics inside your business. I have a plan and a strategy and a framework for how I think about posting on social media. It's called Who's the Who, So What? We'll talk about it some other time. I might even have talked about it on an episode before. If so, I'll make sure I put that in the show notes for you. But have a plan, okay? If you don't have a plan, if you're just wandering around aimlessly like those people in Disney World, you will be investing the most precious resource that you have, which is time, and you'll just be wasting it because you'll be wandering around like those people at Disney World wondering like, wow, we just spent $1,000 to get here, and now we have no plan of attack for what we're going to do and execute on. And so we're just going to wander around aimlessly, and that probably did not get them the outcome they were looking for because they probably only got to ride a handful of rides at that park. And if they wanted to try to ride a bunch of the big ones, it probably did not work out very well for them. So my question to you, do you have a plan? And the second part is, are you actually executing on that plan? Because if you do, you get the plans and you start executing on them. I'm very confident that that will help you unleash your awesome on the world. See ya. Thanks for listening to Unleash the Awesome. Please be sure to subscribe, rate, and review wherever you listen to your podcasts. And please share us on your favorite social media platforms using hashtag UnleashAwesome.